So as a quick review of the dog code, uh, let's look at some uh, basic principles or properties of writing a class. And we say that when we have a class definition, we say public class and then the name of the class. And in Java, class names are capitalized. And then we use these curly brackets to begin and end the class. That one begins the class. And this last curly bracket down here ends the class. And we have two sections. This area here is known as the static area. And you can recognize a static area because it's not inside of any method. You see that? So technically, this is also the static area because that's not inside any method. But we usually put all of our attributes at the beginning of the class definition. You don't have to, but that's the traditional way of doing it. Attributes are properties of a class that are individual to each element of the class. So if I had three different dogs in memory, they would each have their own name, their own age, and their own weight. Now, in this class, AP Computer Science A, we, which is sort of your first class in Java, we tend to make our data private and our methods public. And we do this to encapsulate our data so that only the class can touch its own data. But then we provide these friendly interfaces methods that allow others to come in and query the data or manipulate the data, but always under our control through these methods. So the dog here has three properties. It has a name property, an age property, and a weight property. You can see that the data types for the properties are listed right before the names of the properties. In this case, the name happens to be a string uh, object. Uh, and the string is a class. You know it's a class because it's capitalized. This string class happens to be a class that's part of the Java library, so no one else wrote it. You, don't, you didn't have to write that. The age and the weight, however, are primitive properties. They, they're of type primitive. This one's an integer, and this one is a decimal number. Here we have a method. You can see that the method is something that the class can do. This particular method doesn't make use of the attributes, but most methods will manipulate attributes. For example, here, this method will retrieve the name of the dog and give it back to the user. Let's look at these methods. These are called the getters. They get information about the attributes. And then these are the setters or the mutators. They can change the attributes. You can see here that typically for a method, we have a access modifier. Most of the time, most methods we'll be writing in this class will be public. Then we have a return type. What kind of answer does the method return? If the method does not return an answer, we use the return type void to indicate that there is no return uh, from that method. There's no data returned from that method. And you can see here that some methods do not need any information to do their work. This method, for example, will return the age of the dog and doesn't need to be told anything when it's called. But here is an example of a method that has a parameter. And here the parameter is going to be the new name of the dog that's going to be stored in memory to replace the existing name. And so pretty much all methods follow that format. You have a access modifier, a return type, the name of the method, and then a list of parameters that the, that the method needs to do its work. <coughs> We're going to look now at a situation that we discussed before, which is called overloading. Here you can see the speak method is overloaded here. And you, that means that uh, we have the same method name, but because it's got a different set of parameters, we're allowed to use the same name. If I had two methods with the exact same method signature, that would cause a compiler error because then when I called speak, it wouldn't know which one to call. But here, this is speak with no parameters. This is speak with a string integer. And this is speak with a decimal number. 
And so you can see there's no conflict here. The headers are all unique. And so we are able to create the different versions of the speak method. This is called overloading. We also introduced the concept of a constructor. These are things that we can use to create objects of the class. This particular class has two constructors. We say that if a constructor has no parameters, that is the zero argument or default constructor. And then here we have another constructor. This one happens to have all the parameters or arguments defined. So all the properties can be filled in when the dog is born. Notice that the constructor has the exact same name as the class. And unlike the regular methods, the constructor does not have a return type, not even void. In a class, when you inherit from one class to another, the derived class inherits these methods here, but does not inherit the constructors. Technically speaking, by the way, the constructors are not even methods. Sometimes I will refer to them as other methods or unique methods, but technically they're not methods because methods in Java are both inherited and have return types. And you can see that these constructors do not have either of those features. So that in a nutshell is my quick review of what it takes to write a class. Now we're going to go next door and work on two labs. Please get your stuff together and I'll meet you there in two minutes.